Hello and welcome, this is World of Wastewater, and you're watching part 17 in a series going over a wastewater exam, which you can find a link to in the description below. If you're following along, these questions are numbers 81 through 85. Life goes by too, Life fast. Goes by too fast, so it's important to savor each moment. That's right. You gotta stop and smell the primaries. And if you encounter unpleasant odors, well that's just part of life's rich tapestry. And it may be time to make sure the pumps are working. With that said, let's get started. If the growth of filamentous bacteria in the mixed liquor rapidly increases, which of the following is most likely to happen? A. Improved settling and clarification of the wastewater. B. Decreased oxygen consumption in the aeration tank. C. Bulking sludge and potential effluent solids carryover. D. Enhanced removal of organic pollutants. The answer is C, bulking sludge and potential effluent solids carryover. Filamentous bacteria are thread-like organisms that play an important role in activated sludge systems. They're necessary in small amounts because they provide structure and stability to flock particles. However, excessive and uncontrolled growth of filamentous bacteria will lead to a condition known as filamentous bulking. This is also commonly referred to as bulking sludge. Bulking sludge under a microscope may look similar to the pictures on the screen. The filamentous bacteria will extend outward from the flock, creating a bridging effect between flock particles. This gives the sludge an appearance that can be described as light and fluffy. If the filamentous growth goes unchecked, it can lead to sludge billowing over the weirs of a clarifier, leading to solids in the effluent. Some common countermeasures to eliminate excessive filament growth can be to increase wasting, increase dissolved oxygen within the aeration basin, and continuously dose the return activated sludge with chlorine. Which of these devices would you not use to measure flow? A. Weir B. Partial flume C. Venturi meter D. Baffle The answer is D. Baffle Weirs, partial flumes, and venturi meters are all different types of flow measuring devices. Baffles are not. Baffles are used to change the flow pattern and behavior of a liquid, but they are not designed to directly measure the flow rate of a liquid. In feet per second, what velocity should the influent flow be for proper grit removal? A, 0 0.5, B, 1.0, C, 2.0, D, 3.0. The answer is B, one foot per second. Grit consists of heavier materials like sand, small stones, and other dense debris. To remove these, we need to strike a balance with the flow of the influent wastewater. If the velocity is too low, organic matter will start settling along with the grit, which is undesirable. On the other hand, if the velocity is too high, it will start scouring the already settled grit and carry it away, causing issues with downstream equipment and processes. A flow rate of around one foot per second creates ideal conditions. It allows grit to settle efficiently while keeping lighter organic matter suspended for proper separation during wastewater treatment. If you've been following along with this series, you may recall in question 43 of part 9, where I gave this answer away in the explanation. Understanding and memorizing this velocity is important for every operator. A wastewater plant manager needs to communicate a performance evaluation that includes both positive feedback and areas for improvement. The most effective approach would be to A. Send an email outlining the evaluation results. B. Schedule a private meeting to discuss the evaluation in detail. C. Post the evaluation results on the plant bulletin board. D. Send a casual text message with a few improvement suggestions. The answer is B. Schedule a private meeting to discuss the evaluation in detail. 
When taking a higher level wastewater exam, you can typically expect to have a few questions related to personnel management on the exam. With that said, a private meeting is the best approach for a performance evaluation because it fosters open dialogue, delivers specific feedback, allows for personalized communication, and demonstrates the value you place on the employee's development. In this setting, the employee can ask questions and share their perspective, while you can provide detailed examples of their strengths and areas for improvement. This tailored approach builds understanding, promotes actionable change, and shows the employee that their growth is important to you. Which of the following is the reason why solid samples should be preserved by refrigeration? A, this will slow biological activity and prevent solids decomposition. B, this will make all solids settle to the bottom of the container rapidly. C, this will lock in the density of the solids. D, solid samples do not need to be refrigerated for preservation. The answer is A. This will slow biological activity and prevent solids decomposition. Refrigeration of wastewater samples to a temperature of 6 degrees Celsius or less is crucial because it minimizes biological activity within the sample. This slows down the natural decomposition of solids by microorganisms. Preserving the sample integrity ensures that analytical results such as TSS, BOD, and COD accurately represent the wastewater conditions at the time of sampling. There can be a wide range of wastewater analyses that may need to be performed at your plant, and so it's important to make sure you're preserving every sample appropriately in order to receive a valid result. Always refer to a standard operating procedure at your plant or reference guidelines from proper publications such as the EPA or standard methods if you're not sure. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the others on this channel. If you want to help us keep making great content for operators, check out the link in the description. See you next time on World of Wastewater. That's right.